Good evening, friends, and welcome to You, We, and You for the month of April 2017. My name is Kimon Joseph, and I'm the officer in charge at the University of the West Indies Open Campus in Dominica, and I take this opportunity to welcome you to our program. This evening, we have a very exciting show for you. We'll be talking to three members of our chapter of the Alumni Association. But um, before we get a chance to meet them, I just want to remind those of you who have not yet um, signed on to be part of our graduation, if you graduated in 2016 and would like to be part of that, you are late um, because our ceremony will be on Tuesday, Tuesday the 25th of April, but we can still accept you if you would contact us at the UWI by tomorrow, Friday. I also want to tell you about the Woods and Wine event that the UWI Open Campus will be hosting on Thursday, Thursday the 27th of April. We are a member of the Dominica Reading Association. We are at the UWI Open Campus and we'll be hosting that event for the Dominica Reading Association. It's a free event where you can come and listen to artists and musicians and watch dancers and um, listen to choral speeches and so on by um, local people and you get a free glass of wine with that. So we invite you to come to the Open Campus to enjoy that on Thursday, Thursday the 27th of April and we begin at 7 p.m. So again, we are very grateful that you could join us this evening and we will be talking this evening to the president, the PRO and the secretary of the Alumni Association Dominica chapter. They will tell us of all the exciting plans that they have. They will tell us of the regional association as well and we'll get a chance to talk about their experiences at UWE. So stay with us, we'll be right back. I'm part of a tough, smart, constantly evolving, never too old to learn community of human beings. Proud of country. Proudly Caribbean, global citizens. With convenient access to over 400 learning programs. Delivered both online and face-to-face. -face. From the Caribbean's University of First Choice. My mind. My life. My world of possibilities is wide open. Call, click, or visit the UWI Open Campus. Welcome back. I thank you for staying with us and those who are joining us now. Welcome to UE and U for the month of April 2017. I am Kimon Joseph, the officer in charge at UWI Open Campus in Dominica. My co-host, Mr. Barry Kazimi, is not doing too well and so he's currently on sick leave and hopefully he'll be able to join us for the May episode. But with me this evening, I have in the studios of MAPIN three representatives from the UE Alumni Association Dominica chapter. Um, in the farthest area there, I have Mrs. Janella McLeod Schrottman, and she is the secretary of the chapter in Dominica. Next to her, I have Mr. Darren Pinard, and Darren is the chair of the chapter. And next to him is Miss Leandra Landa, who is the PRO of our local chapter. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And welcome to UE and you. Thank you. Thank you. Darren, I understand you've done the program before. And Leandra too, you've done you've I done have. UE and U before. But Janella, it's your first time first doing time. UE and U, so welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. You. I'd like to ask all of you to just introduce yourself. Just tell us a little bit about you, um, what you do in your own private life, and um, some of your hobbies, things that you enjoy. So we'll start with you, Janella. My name is Janella McGlaw Trotman. I'm the manager and owner of Freelance Secretary of Services. I undertake secretarial services. Um, I major really in um, doing rapporteuring services and record secretary services for a number of organizations. I have oh. had this business for the past 10 years. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy really doing it. I think uh, my years at UE have prepared me for being my own boss and working <laughs> for myself. Very good. Darren? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Darren Pinan. Um, currently still working at the National Bank of Dominica in the role of manager underwriting, monitoring and review. Um, been at the bank for 21 years, graduated UE in 2010 with a um, bachelor's in banking and finance. Um, in my spare time, I enjoy working around the house <laughs> <laughs> and um, football <coughs> and so on. It's like Kimon said it's my second time here and it's a, a pleasure to be here in Marping Studios again. And thank you for having us. Okay. Miss Landa. 
My name is Leandra Landa, uh, very busy bee. I <laughs> am a teacher at the Convent High School for the last 12 years, where I teach geography. I also own my very small business. I call it a ribbon business because I um, really concentrate on printing ribbons. So it's called Lovely Things. Mm -hmm. I uh, manage three artistic clubs the, at the Convent High Schools, including Speech Chorale, which you earlier mentioned, mm -hmm. Sign Language Club and the Choir. A member of Cicero Singers and Sweet Harmony Choir of the Fatima Church. So I love the arts, so I'm, I'm very involved in that. And I also like writing poetry, folk songs, what have you. Very good. Well, you sound like three very, very busy people. One person <laughs> owns her own business, one person has been at the bank for 21 years, and one person is in everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> and so we are very pleased that you have given of your time that is already so valuable and scarce to you to be part of the Alumni Association. I want to ask the three of you about your time at UWI um, before we even move further. So first of all, I want to know what programs each of you did and why you chose that particular program. Jill, and we'll begin with um, Leandra. I graduated from Mona mm -hmm. in 2012 and a very wonderful experience where I pursued a Bachelor's of Education in Geography and Social Studies, secondary education. Mm -hmm. um, I have a passion for teaching. I've had a good experience, especially at the Convent High School where I currently teach. Mm -hmm. And so I felt it was important to put not just the letters, but the experience and the, the theory, the knowledge um, behind the teaching. I know I'm, I was, I'm good at, at teaching and reaching children, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be sure that when I enter the classroom that I'm doing it the proper way because there's always a chat, there's always the talk that teaching is not um, approached as diff other professions. You can't operate on someone as a doctor without the, right. you know, the um, qualification. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I felt um, teachers need to approach the education um, sector such as that, as you know, take it very seriously. So get the qualifications and do it the right way. Mm -hmm. So I tried to do it in my earlier part of my, my stint as a teacher. Mm -hmm. thank, thank God that I got a scholarship through the government when I won Miss Dominica. Right. So I felt that the UWI would be a very good place to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, am, I was encouraged by my principal, of course, Mrs. Dublin, who is also an alumni, you know. Mm -hmm. So I pursued a, a Bachelor's of Education at Mona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Darren, you did your program, kind of like Leandra, you went in the field that you're working. So you did your program in um, banking and finance. Um, why? Why did you choose banking and finance? Well, I love banking and finance, actually. <laughs> I've been, as I said, I've been in that field for quite a long time, and it was a natural fit for me. It immediately gave me, you know, the additional capacity in my working environment <coughs> and so on. And the, the, the material that we would cover in that program was immediately applicable to what I, I had to do at work, so it was of great assistance and, and so on. It significantly helped in my career and development. Um, the program, I started the program in 2006. It was started off initially as a collaborative effort between the UWI and the Caribbean Association of Banking and Finance. Okay. Um, the Caribbean Association of Banking and Finance, they, they provide great support in terms of um, assisting with the video conferencing and some certain lectures for various um, subjects and so on. So it was a very, very enriching ex experience and so on, and I really enjoyed the, the entire program and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, completed the program in 2010 um, and, and was also blessed to have been selected at that, in that year um, as the valedictorian mm -hmm. um, for the open campus. Mm -hmm. um, we had our graduation now in Grenada at the time. It was, so the, the entire experience of, of doing the program and completing it and so on was just a blessing and so on, you know, and it, I have no, no regrets and so on. <laughs> <laughs> Actually hoping to, to do some further um, programs with, with the UWI and um, I would not be considering that if I had a bad experience in right, the first, in the first right, instance. Right. So you know, I, I mean, like I said, UWI has been a blessing to us and, and we're hoping that my, my presence here is just me trying to give back a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, 
to the UWI and, and so on in recognition for what it has done for me. Mm -hmm. Janella, what program did you do at UWI and why did you choose that program? Okay, I started off in 1992. I was then a student uh, employee of Cable and Wireless. As a lot of persons would know, Cable and Wireless was always interested in the development of its employees. So there was always continuous training. So I was one that would always be looking for training opportunities. So I registered at UWI to do the Certificate in Business Administration. Mm -hmm. Following that, a couple of years elapsed, and then I said, you know something? UWI is offering the degree to persons who are employed, and I wasn't able at the time that I had a young son, so I wasn't able to go on campus. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to make, you know, the best of that opportunity, and I registered to do my uh, degree in management studies. So in 2006, I graduated from UWE, and that I was the second, that was the final, I think, the final cohort of students who went on, off to Kevil and graduated. And so this has helped me tremendously. Um, my daughter now is currently a student of UWE. I have encouraged her. She's currently a student at UWE. She wants to do law, but she started off here mm -hmm. so she can at least help me off in the office. Mm -hmm. And also, I am going to be doing my master's with UWE as well. So my time at UWE was very enjoyable, mm -hmm. especially in the time of Mr. Dinan, God rest his soul, mm -hmm. and Miss White. So I had a very good experience. And so now that I'm, my business has taken off and my daughter is off, you know, when at high school you have to give everything. I still have to give her all the, but she's working as she's learning. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I push that thing, work as you earn. Mm -hmm. The same thing I did, she's currently doing it. So at least she has to work now and then go off to campus and complete her, 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 deg her mm -hmm. degree. Very but, good. You know, you is the best you now for persons who are working. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Dominica. But I want to talk about that too, because Leandra, you had a full campus experience. So I want to talk about you first, because you had um, what Darren and, and, and Janella have not had the opportunity to have. Yeah. So I want to ask you, um, Leandra, how was it? How was Mona? How was being there and getting the opportunity to be part of campus life? Okay, well, Kimo leaving Dominica to go to a new country was, uh, it was a big change. But I embraced it from the beginning because Jamaica is a country I was looking forward to um, moving to. What I noticed about you is from the first day, there's always something going on and there's something for everybody. If you want to do something religious, there are activities for you. If you're into the arts, such as myself, there's something going on. Mm -hmm. If you're into educational things, there's, I mean, there's so much. I, was, I got the opportunity to live on Mary Sequel Hall, and what I, I loved about the campus is that your hall makes a difference in your life. So your first year, there's what they call the first year experience where they acclimatize you to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. they, they give you the opportunity to learn about the language, the culture of the country, and then you have the opportunity to learn about living on campus, living with different people. Mm -hmm. What are the programs that you know available and how they can help you? And I, I can tell you, I got the opportunity um, to visit a mosque. Oh, wow. And a, a, a Jewish temple mm -hmm. right there in Jamaica. And, um, and then your second year, this is where, is, well, on, on Mary Sequel Hall, you got, it's called the Ubuntu program where they want you to help other people. It's not just about you anymore. So we were taken to places like care facilities, infirmaries mm -hmm. and so forth, reaching out into the community. So I got the chance to go to August Town, which many people know as a, a, an area with violence. Mm -hmm. But we were able to help young people in the community at risk, um, young people. And then your third year, they're preparing you to transition, to mm -hmm. right? So we got opportunities, learning to dress for the interview. How do you set up your resume? Attending an interview. Mm -hmm. So you can tell that the hall itself was working alongside the campus mm -hmm. in preparing you to become a, 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 a well-rounded individual. I had the opportunity to serve as PRO of my hall, mm -hmm. the hall's um, exam committee. And uh, 
I had the responsibility, of course, to inform my hall mates of what's going on, preparing information for them, and I had the opportunity to serve as an orator for two years, um, where I would uh, lead uh, discussions and so forth. And uh, in addition to that, my programs on campus, I got to see Jamaica, mm -hmm. meet very important people, meet people that would impact me, and I still remember them and hope to one day visit Jamaica again. Um, it's a very tough act to, to live on campus, mm -hmm. to try to juggle living on hall, which has its own activities, as well as your programs. And sometimes you feel like they operate in, um, separately, so they don't understand what's going on on hall, <laughs> but they understand in a sort of way. So, yeah. But it was wonderful, and I, I really, and the people I met, that's the most important thing, the networking. Mm -hmm. Having friends from Trinidad, Jamaica, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, even from African countries, it, it, it is just priceless. And so anybody who has the opportunity to live on campus, I will tell you, even if it's for one year, Embrace it because you get to meet people who will play, I'm telling you, years down the road will play a very important role in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, for Darren and I and <laughs> Janella, we did not get to go on campus. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that we're not having a good time. No, no, or did no, not not have a good all, time. Not so Darren, I want to I want to, to tell us a little bit about, about your experience in terms of um, just life as an as an online student. Because Leandra didn't have um, to do with the idea of having a family and, and those kind of other responsibilities and working and all those things. So I want you to tell me how, how your experience with that was. Well, it was challenging. Um, mm -hmm. Leandra's experience sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of work <laughs> too. But, yeah. but as you can well imagine, I mean, working full time, having a family and so on, and juggling all that with studies, it's not the easiest thing, um, mm. but sacrifices have to be made and, um, and so on. And with the support of um, your family, you know, I was able, I was able to, do, to do it and do it successfully mm -hmm. and so on. So the experience in itself was challenging, but that made it uh, all the more rewarding in that, in, um, because of that. My experience was slightly different than the average UWI student in that, as I said earlier, the, the program was put together at the time in collaboration with the Caribbean Association of Banking and Finance. Right. And through their efforts, we were able to do quite a number of video conferencing classes mm -hmm. and so on. So unlike the, the experience at the time where basically it was limited to teleconferencing and more or less just a straight online experience with limited classroom, classrooms and so on, I also had the, had the advantage of having the, vi the video conferences, particularly for many of the banking and the finance, the finance courses in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. So that way I was able to establish a relationship, a, a visual relationship, not just with the lecturers who were primarily based in Trinidad and Barbados, but with also with the students from across the region who were doing the program at the same time. Mm -hmm. We got to know each other quite well because we would be seeing each other on a weekly basis through those um, weekly sessions. I think we had about on average two sessions per week oh. and so on during, during my, my study period. So that in itself was rewarding. I still have those friends. If I go to St. Lucia, if I go to Angola or whatever, I have those people like... Stay, yeah. Yeah, because you know, we know each other well. We start in the classroom. I am in Dominica, they are but we sat in the same classroom mm -hmm. for, for, for years. Mm -hmm. So that was very, very good in itself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so. As I said, you know, the experience going through the whole program whilst working and so on, it was a challenge. But, you know, I was able to do it. Um, and do it well. And do it well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to give my wife a lot of that thanks because mm -hmm. she was able to hold a lot of the, the home front, mm -hmm. you know, while she was allowing me the opportunity to do both my work and, 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 and school. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was good. I Janella, you, when you were finishing, that was when Darren was starting. Mm -hmm. So you are even, even before that, even before we're talking about even online, because Darren at least got some, some in addition to the, um, the teleconferencing, you got quite a bit of online. Mm -hmm. So you were even before that, because your program was with the School of Continuing Studies yes. and through Cable. So tell us about your experience. I had a good experience, although it was challenging, but I think with everything, you have to be determined. And I'm a determined person. Mm -hmm. I, always, I don't ever start things and don't finish it. Mm -hmm. And I always want to excel in whatever I do. So I think my determination saw me through. And 
Given the challenges, you must have the support. And my sister supported me quite a bit during my studies because I had my son, as I said, and then I had a second son. Mm -hmm. So I had the two of them. So my sister supported me because you have to come from work and go to class, mm -hmm. and then you have to do assignments, and then you have to prepare children for next day. So it's quite a challenge. But I enjoy the time I spend at, at UWE, you know, because I, I am a determined person, as I said. And I know one day, you know, that I wanted to have my own business because mm -hmm. my father was an entrepreneur. So then I said, you know, I'm doing all this for purpose because mm -hmm. I want to be my own boss in the future. And so I'm going for the goal. So it was a good experience. Very good. But when you come back, things will be a lot different <laughs> because it's fully online now. And so you'll get that completely different experience with I the know. Open Campus. But we're looking forward to, to you um, getting that opportunity. I am hearing my daughter. <laughs> ah, yes, your daughter is doing the program now. Um, why, I want to ask you all, why, because you're very busy, why did you decide to um, heed the call and give up your time to be part of the Alumni Association. Um, Darren, we'll start with you because you are the chair. Um, as, I, as I've told the, the, the group um, at the beginning, I think that um, the alumni, the persons, the body of the alumni themselves in Dominica remains an untapped resource. We are not coordinated in, in really bringing together improving the overall community and, and bringing more spotlight on, on what the UWI has achieved in, in Dominica and so on. So it is important to me that you know, we sort of come together and join our efforts mm -hmm. to promote the school, to um, help develop the community in general and so on and that is the primary reason I got involved in the Alumni Association and so on. We, we are young. Mm -hmm. We only recently um, well, got ele um, the elections going and so mm -hmm. on. That was in January. So, mm -hmm. so um, the alumni out there, you will be hearing from us pretty soon. Mm -hmm. we, right now, we're kind of engaged in preparing for the recognition of graduate ceremony that's taking place on the 25th of April mm -hmm. and so on. But following quickly from that, we will be looking to food our outreach and so on to, you know, to get in contact and to invite all the various alumni um, across the island um, to, to become part of the association and mm -hmm. so on. And then let us put our heads together and see how we can move the UWI agenda forward and you know, see how we can contribute positively to education and overall social life in Dominica. Mm -hmm. Janela, why did you get involved? Why, why did you respond to um, Janela's invitation to come to the cocktail? I responded, um, first of all, because my daughter is now a student there. Secondly, it's my intention to continue my studies. And then at the, at the event, there was the request for a secretary, and that is my field. Mm -hmm. So I felt I could, you know, I could provide that service, and um, I volunteered, and I was actually unopposed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so but then I want to assist the executive in building a database of the graduates out there, because, mm -hmm. you know, as the president said, you know, there are many graduates in Dominica and then, you know, we just need to have them come together. We want to reach those that do not live in the city, those that live right. out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we are planning, you know, to really have this mass um, number of graduates, you know, from the, uh, the alumni association. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. So they'll be hearing from us. <laughs> Leandra, you are in so many other things. You are a very busy person. Um, what made you decide to come to the event and to be part of the association? Um, I noticed that I am in a, a lot of things, but a lot of artistic things. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd like to become a part of something to do education-wise, not necessarily my job, mm -hmm. but something to do with um, my career, professional, uh, a professional organization. And uh, I'll be honest, I came for the wine and cheese, most of us <laughs> But being there, there was a, it was a, a, a warm feeling. It, it feels good that you're in a room that people basically share the same room. The same way you go somewhere and say, oh, I'm a convent high school girl. That's a yes. nice feeling. Yes. Or you go, I'm a grammar school boy. I'm an SMA boy, that sort of yes. thing. 
and uh, it feels good that when you go places, you can say, I went to the UW, and, say, okay, and then you go on and say, which campus or which, which you hall? know, yeah. it feels yeah. good. And uh, I said, okay, well, I think it's a time in my life, I'm making some transitions in my personal life, where I said, okay, maybe I can give off myself to my university, mm -hmm. because I felt an absolute warmth when I was on Mona. The way how people past and present would come together and say, let's do this for our university, because it has done so much for us. It's, our ta it's, it's, their, it's my time to give back. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that I joined the, um, the organization in, in terms of the Alumni um, Association. And I really want the opportunity to reach, as Darren said, untapped potential. All these young people coming back to Dominica mm -hmm. with their knowledge, their expertise, their skills, let's use it to do something alongside the mm -hmm. campus, mm -hmm. you know, here in Dominica. Mm -hmm. There are so much social programs we can spearhead, educational programs we can spearhead. So I think as, as this organization, we can do some good work here in mm -hmm. Dominica among our peers and others. Yeah. For us at the Open Campus, in the leadership of the um, Open Campus in Dominica, uh, from the time I came in, in 2011, um, I always thought, well, we need to do something. We need to revitalize our alumni association. Because I remember my own time, because I have two degrees from other places, um, in addition to the one I'm working on for UWI now. And particularly in my first one, I had an amazing time at that school, an amazing time. And I remember that before we left, they asked us to fill in these surveys. It was more than one survey. I remember that for one of the surveys, um, it asked me who my favorite teacher was and why and so on. And then years later, after in 2012, when I started working at UWI already, I got a letter from him. And he was telling me, um, you know, what had been going on since I left and so on. And essentially, he was asking me to make a contribution. And he introduced me by letter to a student who was in financial trouble and so on. And so I thought to myself, mm-hmm, maybe that's why they had asked me who my favorite teacher was at the time, whatever. Mm -hmm. but, but they have such a fantastic network of alumni. I get their magazines all the time. I get their, um, their emails. I get their information mm -hmm. all the time. And it's not just about, about money. They want me to know what's going on. They want me to share my own things in my life. Um, in 2013, I sent them photographs and stuff of myself and at UE, in my current job and so on, because they want to know what is going on with you and they want to know um, what you've been doing in your life. And um, then I saw a Facebook page that I was added to and so on. Mm. So it, it, like Darren is saying, it's really a chance to do a lot of networking through yeah. tapping with, in with people's talents and um, an opportunity to, to be able to do that. So for us, when Janella came, um, Janella Samuel, who works at the site, came and said, you know what, I want to do something for alumni. Um, I said, but you think they'd come? And she said, of course they will. And you know, it was such a tremendous success, the, um, the, the um, wine and cheese <laughs> event, mm -hmm. and the people actually volunteered themselves for that. So we were quite pleased that you made that contribution. We want to thank you very much. Darren, could you just tell us the other people who are on the Alumni Association? Okay, we have the Vice President, Ms. Abigail Duran, the Treasurer, Mr. Barry Kazemi. We have Ms. Cleo Watt, who is the Treasurer, and we have Ginella Samuel, who is the Execu uh, Executive Officer, mm -hmm. um, just explained by Ms. Yes, so Janella works with you, um, but she, she doesn't vote on your committee or anything like that, yes. but she works with you um, to be able to be our liaison person, um, our ex officio person there with your organization. And she also relates with the regional um, organization because the Alumni Association has a chapter in each of the sites. So she's able to work with that group and report to you what is, what is essentially going on there. So, of course, all the people on, on that list are very, very busy people. Mm -hmm. And so we are very grateful, you know, that people can make that time and that contribution to be part of an organization that we believe um, we all believe in because we all believe in UE and we all believe in the potential of UE and so it is always good when we have people who are committed to come on board and to help with that. I understand that you have meetings every third Thursday of the month, is yes. that true? Yes. And what are some of the things that you discussed there, Darren? Well, firstly, we, we've been looking, like I said, we've been planning towards the recognition of graduate, graduate ceremony, ceremony. Uh -huh. coming up. One of the things that is high on our agenda is looking to push the 
Pelican Perks. Mm -hmm. this, um, this will involve getting businesses to come on board by offering various discounts and benefits and so on to mm -hmm. alumni members, card holding mm -hmm. alumni members, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, so these, these are the things we have at the forefront right now. Mm -hmm. But the first, before we can get all these things really working and really successful, we have to go on a, on a drive in terms of a membership, um, membership drive. Mm -hmm. So we will be making the first real pitch at the, at the ceremony, at the graduate ceremony coming up um, next week. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a very good opportunity for us to be able to engage with alumni and talk to them about um, some of the ideas that you and your group uh, have been working on from since January. We'll take a break and we'll come back in a few minutes. I'm part of a tough, smart, constantly evolving, never too old to learn community of human beings. Proud of country. Proudly Caribbean, global citizens. With convenient access to over 400 learning programs. Delivered both online and face-to-face. -face. From the Caribbean's University of First Choice. My mind. My life. My world of possibilities is wide open. Call, click, or visit the UWI Open Campus. And welcome back. If you're just joining us, welcome to you. This is You, We, and You for the third Thursday of April, 2017. My name is Kimon Joseph, and I'm the host of the program. My co-host, Barry Kazimi, is out this month, and so he's not here with me. But in the studios of Mapping, I have Janella Trotman, who is the secretary of the local chapter of the Alumni Association. I also have Mr. Darren Pinard, who is the chair of the chapter, and Miss Leandra Lander, the PRO. And we have been talking, Darren, before the break about some of the plans of the newly formed Alumni Association. So the association chapter in Dominica was revitalized in January. And so you have sort of hit the ground running and you have quite a few plans. As you told us before the break, um, your first aim is to go on a membership drive um, to be able to get people to sign up and um, to be part of the establishment. And so we're just gonna talk a little bit about that and then you'll tell us some of the things that you're planning. Okay, sure. Well, firstly, we, we, we're looking to have a booth at the ceremony where we're going to invite the new graduates to sign up, hopefully right away. Um, if they're unable to do so right away, we will give them instructions as to how they could do so online. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are looking to contact all the other members through whatever media is available, primarily email mm -hmm. and um, telephone and so on, because we do not want to limit membership to the people within near proximity of the city. We want to reach out to all the members at all the various things. So we will be using um, the internet extensively and so on for that regard. Uh, the, at, the, at the ceremony, we, the alumni will have a, a little booth where we will have registration forms on the site. We will also have some little merchandise and tokens available for sale. One of the things we recognize is that a lot of our local graduates, especially from the open campus, um, they really have been living without any tokens, without anything mm -hmm. to show that, that they, they, were, uh, mm -hmm. they are alumni, they are part of the organization and mm -hmm. so on. So we are looking to, to remedy that and so on. So we will be having some little items with all the UWI um, embroidered on and, and so on for sale. And then this is just the initial phase. We will be ma I'm having a lot more of those available for everybody mm -hmm. um, in the coming months and so on. Um, we will be looking to put together um, various activities like starting off like with a family um, fund day. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the drive the, the drive will in involve a lot of coming together, not just like remote um, sign ups. As you said earlier, the wine and cheese event was very successful because it brought people together and mm. so we were able to, to, to think. So we will be looking to do various activities and things that will kind of bring the, the, the alumni together and at those events, have them sign up and sell, sell them and make them understand the benefits of being part of the association and that type of thing there, including being able to enjoy the, the, the Pelican perks that will be available and we will be pushing those aggressively over mm. the next few months. So tell us well. a little bit more about that. What exactly is a Pelican perk? Um, Leandra, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, as I said, we are still in the early stages of uh, organizing these things. But I, as I, I honestly believe that as a member, we can allow our members to interact with the corporate community. Mm -hmm. So I know, for example, as a teacher, mm -hmm. I have a 
a card where I can get discounts and those sort of things. So right. these are just some of the, the different uh, opportunities we can provide. Mm -hmm. And whatever else, that's what I'm saying, the more members we have on board, mm -hmm. they can share different ideas that we can incorporate. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe too we can also get involved in, in social social programs, so outreach, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the membership drive is absolutely important because we want to hear from you. What do you have to offer? I mean, yeah. just the, the few of us who are on the committee, our ideas are limited. We have good ideas, but they are limited. Mm -hmm. And I know the UWI is always involved in educating the public because I know the lectures, the four lectures that mm -hmm. the UWI hosts every year, very, very, very important to, to Dominica and I, I had the opportunity to, opportunity to attend a few. And I think these are things we can, we can branch off from, you know, are working alongside the campus, mm -hmm. you know, the ideas that they have already put in place. We can just get better and, and, and ripple off from what the campus you know, it, I think at, at a point the alumni can can host events that you can depend on us, mm -hmm. it, even with the guild, you know. So, as I said, they're in the budding stages, mm -hmm. and we really hope that if you're listening to this program and you are attending the ceremony next week, you join us and tell us what you, you, you we can do for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what do you think we can do, um, the Alumni Association can do for alumni? Well, to add to the Pelican books, is, it's really loyalty rewards, mm -hmm. but they must become members. So we can do nothing for them until they become members, because mm -hmm. they will have to, they will need a, a membership card, mm -hmm. and so they have to join us so we can do whatever is necessary. Mm -hmm. So, Darren, if I'm sitting at home this, this Thursday evening and I say, oh, but I went to UE in 1975, I, I want to be part of the Alumni Association, who do I call? What do I do? How do I get started? Well, at this time, you, you would start off by contacting the UWA office. Um, primarily, our, our point person there is the Ms. Ginella Samuel, the ex-officer of it. And, and she is there on a full-time basis, so you can contact her from 8 to 5. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first point. We also have Mr. Kazimi, who is at the office on a full-time basis. You can also contact me and any one of the other executive members. Mm -hmm. Your, our information will be made available um, in subsequent um, publications mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. um, we are all open. We are all um, looking to push that, the effort forward. So I don't think anybody will, will um, turn anybody and refer them to somebody else. We will, we will look to help um, ourselves. Mm -hmm. One of the things we, we are also interested in doing that, that we, did, we failed to mention earlier was to see how we can also support the, the current student and body. We, we're looking at probably providing some scholarship, financial assistance, even though it's on a partial basis mm -hmm. and so on. Um, we would invite business, local businesses, business places or business persons to assist in those efforts as well, as well as maybe from funds we would raise as, as mm -hmm. the association mm -hmm. and so on. So we're not just looking to, to benefit the, the former students, but to also help the current, current students along mm -hmm. the way. And I understand so. that you have a meeting coming up with the current guild um, at next, your next meeting in May. You are going to be meeting um, with them to discuss some ideas that they have about how you can collaborate to assist um, local students. Yes. Well, one of the things I think would be very beneficial is some sort of, as we've been talking, we've been talking about networking, some sort of networking for them um, with people on the outside. Um, like you, who are working in, in various fields and various areas, um, that they can have that sort of networking with you um, so that they can, they can improve in various areas, um, wherever your strengths are. Uh, for instance, I, I attended one of their meetings and they were talking about, about having seminars for students. Um, like Leandro was talking about at Mona, that you have these seminars that teach you how to do better resumes, how to um, do better interviews and so on. Yes. And, and that is an opportunity for alumni who are part of the Alumni Association to be able to come on board and help the current students with that. That's one, that's one important area that they were mentioning that they would definitely like um, collaboration with the Alumni Association to be able to do. I want to talk now about um, next week's um, recognition of graduate ceremony because you are very much part of that. And so next week you will be back in Regalia for the first time in a long time. <laughs> yes. uh, Janella, how do you feel about that? Oh. <laughs> I'm 
excited to be back in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the last time I wore that was 2006. Mm -hmm. so I really look forward to take lots of photos too. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, you will be also part of the ceremony because you have to do the alumni, alumni pledge. Yes. How are you feeling? I feel excited. I'm looking forward to it. It's my mm -hmm. second time participating in the local ceremony. Ah, since graduation, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I, it, it was a pleasurable experience the first time, and I'm looking for it to I'm the same this mm -hmm. time around. Mm -hmm. Leandra, you haven't been in this thing since 2012. Right, and I'm looking forward to get wearing my white, uh -huh. my white hood. <laughs> um, and you see, it's harder for me. At least you see they have a local network mm -hmm. um, from I, I studied in Jamaica so I feel I feel a little cut off <laughs> from my campus life or my campus culture but you is you anywhere yes and so I am excited to get back into the vibe mm -hmm. um, looking forward to it for next Tuesday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to ask about the regional association now because um, you are a branch your chapter of the regional association. And um, Sandra Griffith Carrington of Barbados is the one who is coordinating the open campuses efforts at the alumni um, revitalization. So it's not only in Dominica that we are having um, the executives rekindling again, but all throughout the region, we've been having um, elections and so on started, that started about last October, and we're still continuing to, to form those chapters. What are some of the plans, Darren, um, going forward from the regional standpoint? Well, uh, our plans that we've just discussed is along the same in line with what's happening regionally. Mm -hmm. like, we, like I said, we only recently um, re revitalized the, the local chapter. Mm -hmm. This has been done in a number of countries. Similarly, similar efforts have been done. Mm -hmm. The Pelican Pulse is something that is being done um, regionally. I think Layat is one of the the um, body is currently affiliated with the association, um, like in, especially the Barbados chapter and so on, where, where various discounts and so on are available. So we're looking to put our efforts together, not mm -hmm. just in Dominica, but regionally as mm -hmm. well. When you're a UWDI graduate, you're not a, just limited to Dominica, you're mm -hmm. regional and, and, and global, more mm -hmm. or less. So it's like one UWI across the region. Mm -hmm. So we're looking mm -hmm. to do everything we're doing here is basically mirrored elsewhere within the region and mm -hmm. so on. So. But how is the Dominica chapter looking in terms of, um, in terms of the others that you see? How, how, how are well, we looking? looking good. We're looking yeah. good. We, we, we sort of even ahead of, of some of the others that have not yet put together the executive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. So we've already put together the executive and we've already started working behind the scenes mm -hmm. and so on. Um, more of our efforts will come to the fore as time goes along. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we are not behind. We're definitely, we're on, we're on target. I'd like mm -hmm. to add, in February, I had the opportunity to meet the, I was in St. Lucia, I had the opportunity to meet the small executive. And we are really ahead. Okay. Of them because Sandra Griffith was there as well, because I'm also a member of the administrative profession, the Caribbean Association of Administrative Professionals. Yes. I'm an executive member as well. So we had our face-to-face -face meeting in St. Lucia in February, and then Sandra had a small meeting with the Senator Executive, mm -hmm. the EWI Executive. And then I actually told him about our wine and cheese event we had, because mm -hmm. the elections were coming up and they were planning an event and wasn't sure you know, what to do. So I gave them an idea, mm -hmm. the idea of the event and how successful it was for us. So we are really ahead, I must say. And our, our small executive, we have taken it very positively and we are really going to run with it and the, our best mm -hmm. towards this open campus. Mm -hmm. um, I understand um, from Janela that mm -hmm. the uh, regional association is planning a retreat. Um, what, is, what is the purpose of, of that retreat that um, is being planned right now, Darren? Um, okay, the retreats will be in Antigua. It, mm -hmm. will, it will collaborate, it will coincide with the graduation ceremony, the open campus graduation that will be taking place there. I mean, it is, a, it is in an effort for the presidents to come together to basically coordinate our efforts as one association across mm -hmm. the region. Mm -hmm. It will also allow us to network, get to know each other, mm -hmm. and so on like that. And the, and so on. So generally, we will get to know each other firsthand. We will know that we're working towards the same objectives and mm -hmm. goal. This is my understanding from 
from, from the early plans? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, Leandra, what are some of the challenges you think that you will have to face in terms of the association in Dominica? Okay, well, because we are in an open campus territory, mm -hmm. it means that many people are working people. And I know, as you said, we're all busy people, and you have to make, make the effort yeah. to be part of organizations as such as, as this mm -hmm. alumni association. So I know for some people, they say their, their first comments might be, I don't have time, because mm -hmm. they're already juggling families. Mm -hmm. But I assure you, even if you're busy hours, we don't meet that often. Mm -hmm. And we, I'm sure the activities we're going to plan will be not necessarily fun in between, but we will stagger them out. So, but I know that might be a concern of many people that they will not have the time. But I, I can guarantee you being a part of an association will allow you to benefit in so many ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, challenges, as always, um, financially. I mean, raising funds can be very difficult because even for the first one that we're planning, we had to debate, you know, how do we get these um, souvenirs um, to be profitable that mm -hmm. not necessarily for us to just have money collecting, but we need to make money that we can already start financing a future projects. Um, projects. Mm -hmm. So money can, can always be a, a problem. Um, but as I said, Kim, I don't even want to think of too many challenges in, in, the, in the beginning. But I want to jump ahead and say, you might say, oh, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Or some people might say, not you be again. But let's look <laughs> at it that way. Take, your, take that potential, take that knowledge, take the skills that you have already learned or learning mm -hmm. and put it to some good use. You can always find an hour in your week or two hours in your week or month to do something that will benefit not just yourself, but another young person going through the um, channels of UE. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, to add to, to yeah. what Leandra was saying, whilst we do not, we do not meet physically very often, it's primarily once a month, yeah. we use the social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, so we're in constant, constant contact. Mm -hmm. We communicate all the time, every day, um, coordinating our efforts and our plans and so on like that. Yeah. As an alumni association, obviously, um, alumni member, mm -hmm. it will not always require you to physically move to wherever yeah, we are uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, because we will use social media. We have Facebook, we have WhatsApp, and various other um, channels that we can use. So it is not going to be that intrusive. If you live in, like, um, a, a, a distance away from Roseau, it doesn't always necessary for you to have to remain to meet physically. Mm -hmm. We can't get in touch. You can't keep connected and, and be part of what's going on via the social media and so mm -hmm. on. There. So, you know, we are looking at that. Good. I have a, a question though. Um, so I, I am not part of the executive. I just, I want to be a member. I called, you know, gave me the information. Um, what commitment is there for me now? I'm not on the executive, but I'm a member and I'm a paying member. What do you want from me? Well, first of all, we will appreciate some of your time, as we said, and your ideas. Mm -hmm. um, it, we cannot move the agenda forward um, with just us and the executive. Right. We require, um, we badly require the, the, the full membership support and so on. So when we, it's not just a matter of bringing forward the ideas, but we actually need humans to move those things mm -hmm. and so on. If, as you discussed earlier, in terms of assisting the current student body, mm -hmm. if we hold a, a workshop, we will need people to, to um, lecture those things, to, to, yes. to, to do those things. Mm -hmm. um, all the various efforts um, will require some human um, presence and so on. So these are the kind of things we will, we will require. It will probably on occasion also require some small financial token in terms of supporting <coughs> the the association and the and, and the and the objectives mm -hmm. that we have, and we will be looking to to partner with a lot of the local businesses in those efforts uh, and, and so on. So, as a as a member of the association, we're looking to to make you part of a community, an active community, a productive community, and so on and that. Mm -hmm. It is not just about like work, 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 and so on you will get to interact <coughs> with your, 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 your colleagues, your peers, mm -hmm. and so on. You will expand your network, mm -hmm. and so on. That could benefit you in terms of business-wise, in terms of just, you know, your own social um, um, 
development as well and so mm -hmm. on. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. The hour is going by very fast. And so I want to ask each of you to give us sort of your, your final thoughts um, and um, sort of round up, you know, what your role is and um, how you intend to, to fulfill that role and anything else you want to tell us about, about your involvement in the association. We'll start with Janella. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my role as the secretary is to ensure that the record of the different meetings that we undertake or the activities that we do recorded. Um, as I said earlier, we want to build a, a database of the alumni out there. And so we would need that for us to be able to coordinate our efforts and build the association. And we will do our best to assist the Open Campus in that regard. Mm -hmm. Darren, final thoughts? Okay. Well, as the president, I recognize definitely that I don't have a monopoly on the ideas. I, am, I, I see myself more as a facilitator mm -hmm. in terms of making sure that like, things keep rolling. Mm -hmm. And so on. I, I invite ideas and I welcome them from everybody, into the association, the executive members, and and everybody else, you know, and so on. So it takes it takes a lot because my job is very demanding, and so on. I, I often am at the bank into the evenings, and so on. But as I said, it is it is something that I am. I think is worthwhile, and I am willing to commit to it. And I think everybody else that, you know, looking to do something positive and so on would see it as a worthwhile um, venture and, and so on. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, well, as public relations officer, I know that um, there's so much potential in, in my role. And I have noticed that even the other campuses are putting on different programs that allow um, not just its former students, but the public to know what's going on. On, on the campus and I'd like to play a role in that. I think we can bring out not just information about school, the school and its education <coughs> courses and so forth, but I think that time to time, whatever social programs we can formulate, I would like to get that information out to the audience. So the same way the UE has lectures, I think the alumni can also plan activities that can inform and educate mm -hmm. the general public. So I would like to play a role, even with the use of um, social media. Mm -hmm. um, so it might just be tweeting um, some fun facts or educational facts or something about the UE and other things that we really need to know about and, mm -hmm. and that can, can play a role and make a difference in our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, for us at the Open Campus, um, when we didn't have an association, we tried to do a few things, you know, for alumni on our own. And um, two of the things that we did, were they kind of collide. Um, we started the, the dinner, the banquet, the alumni dinner, um, four years ago. And that has been a tremendous success. Um, we are very, very pleased with the response from alumni who participate every year. Um, we give out awards at that event. And um, it has really grown, it has really blossomed. Our, our corporate partners have been working with us and each year we add um, new partners in that venture. And so we're very pleased with that. And last year, what we started doing was using the proceeds from that to actually provide um, bursaries for current students. And that was very good. Um, the year before, we shared with um, victims of Erica of Tropical Storm Erica, and that was a good effort as well. But we wanted to name um, our scholarship, our, our bursary, in honor of Mr. Bernard Dinard, who, of course, Julia spoke about. Um, he was a very vibrant part of our staff, and a lot of the um, older students do remember him. I remember um, just from my travels around the island to speak to teachers in various schools and so on, a lot of the principals um, you know, would say, we're so sorry um, about, about Mr. Dinard, we remember him, and so on. And they have really fond memories of their time at UWI. And um, so 
you have a wonderful opportunity to work with what really wonderful people who've had a very good UE experience. And um, so your job is not going to be very hard, I can tell you, because there are people who've been, really been waiting um, for the opportunity to be part of, of something. Um, I want to thank the three of you again and to the other members of your executive committee because we know that you're very busy and so we're very encouraged by your commitments um, to come on board and to assist the UWI in this. We've been planning and thinking and thinking about um, having a vibrant alumni association again and um, this is a wonderful opportunity for us. We know that you're all very enthusiastic um, about UWI and about this opportunity and so we are, are really looking forward to good things to come. I was very impressed when the Guild um, met last week and they said, oh, we want to work with the Alumni Association. I said, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be wonderful. This is going to be a great year, you know, because we have these two groups who are very vibrant and who will be working well together. My friends, we're coming to the end and I want to give some announcements. Again, our graduation ceremony or recognition of graduate ceremony will be held on Tuesday, the 25th of April for the remaining graduates who have not yet been recognized from the class of 2016. And so you'll get an opportunity to meet the executive of the Alumni Association at that event. Also coming up for us soon will be our summer program um, for our short courses, our CPE courses, continuing education um, courses that we'll be having. And I just want to mention some of them to you. Um, you can look forward to that in early June. Um, it's um, Introduction to Human Resource Management, Introduction to Sales and Marketing Management, Public Speaking, Grant Proposal Writing, Developing Leadership presence and of course we'll be having our children's program again and that will be starting in July. So we invite you to find out more about our summer programs that are coming up. Our number is 448-3182. You can call us and we'll give you more information concerning the dates and the teachers. I also want to talk to you and remind you of our Kalinago conference, which is coming up in August. We had a very good call for papers, and currently we have 17 papers um, that will be presented at that event in August. So you can look forward to more updates from us about that. I also just want to remind you about next Thursday's Woods and Wine on the 27th. UE is a member of the Dominica Reading Association and they will be hosting that free event at the Open Campus. You can come and enjoy poetry, music, dancing, and you get a free glass of wine with that as well. So, on this note, I want to thank my guests who have been in with us. We have had Junella Trotman, we've had Mr. Darren Pinard and Ms. Leandra Landa with us talking about the Alumni Association and I thank them for being with us this evening. I thank Barry too, who's probably watching from home. Barry, hope, we hope you get well very soon because we miss you and we hope that you will be on for our May episode. So, thank you very much for your contribution so, so and for everything you. that you are doing for the UWI. We are very, very, very grateful. And like I said, we really are looking forward to having a vibrant and wonderful association that will put the interests of our alumni and our students first at UWI. Thank you to everyone and have a good night. See you next time.